My name is Alex Steele. Thank you so much for being here. This is episode one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the Alex Steele Show. We're here in Norwich. It's been a beautiful day, and I'm thrilled to have another fun forging demonstration. We got Sam manning the computers. He's going to be switching out our cameras, making sure that it looks all good. And uh, it's gonna be great, guys. Remember, we're live on Facebook and YouTube. If there's a problem on one, hop over on the other, and be sure to make the most of this opportunity by interacting, comment, tell us where you're from. Tell us what you wanna see in future shows. Ask questions, forging-related questions, and like interact with everybody else. You know, this is, this is what it's about. It's about fun, it's about interaction, it's about community, and I'm just so thrilled that we already have people tuning in. This is just fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me. We're gonna give you all just a few seconds to come on in and join the show. Um, Sam, I've been very smart. Like the one thing that I actually need is my hammer. <laughs> I left my normal forging hammer over there. Okay, so the idea of today's show um, is to firstly make sure that we don't prepare at all. So you do not want to have your hammer ready. Like you shouldn't have a hammer ready. That's just critically important. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's just me. Um, the idea behind this show is to do a bangle. Thank you so much. Yeah, that, that, I'm an idiot. The idea of this show is to make a bangle, kind of something along these lines. And I want to get a little bit creative with it. You know, see if we can get one or two knocked out of some of this flat stock that I've got in the fire. And it's, it's going to be totally off the cuff. We're going to get creative with it. See where the hand tools take us. This is going to be a fun, fun little, uh, little more, more, art, more, 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 more free-flowingly creative little session. And I'm thrilled to show it with you. Derek McLean, I'm so thrilled to hear this is your first time watching. And I'm, I, hope that, I hope that you enjoy it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Hey, Trig. Hey, Elijah. Hey, Schaefer. Hey Brian, hey Matt, great to see you Matt. Toby, awesome to see you. Charles, fantastic. Frederick Forge, thank you so much. Everybody on YouTube, really, really appreciate it. Defin Haas is telling me he just got his first knife order, his first knife order as he, as he starts as a bladesmith. That's fantastic. You keep go getting it. That's just incredible, guys. Right, so the steel that I'm using is I'm gonna be using mild steel. Um, audio is coming through. Okay, great, awesome. We're going to be using mild steel, quarter inch thick, half an inch wide. I'm going to try and push it out a little bit using some of the techniques that I'm still really having a lot of fun playing with for the first time. This will be exciting, this first one, and um, let's get started. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to do a somewhat short taper, probably in the region of, eh, you know, two and a half inches. So come over that far edge, bring it down. I don't want to bring it to a point, however using that far edge for a little kind of added efficiency. I have not mentioned yet, I believe this is the <laughs> like second bangle I've ever made. But, however, the reason for doing this is because the bangle that I wear is actually one that Jacob Farham once demonstrated. And uh, when he demonstrated that, he demonstrated that at my workshop to a, a group of students that were taking a class from him last year. Manage that up. So what's going on? Any questions coming through yet, Sam? Who's saying hi? Woohoo! Absolutely. Thank you so much, Maximus. I'm 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 very pleased that that your plea is that we got 10,000 subscribers. That no, makes me very happy. I want to say like that it, it's difficult when, when one is putting out content, one can often get in the position where you're forgetting that every single number that gets added to your profile is an individual person that has decided that they care enough to, to get a feed of your videos. It's difficult because you just kind of get put in that, you, you, you get yourself into the lull of seeing you know, just numbers come through and you forget they're real people. But 10,000 people, that is astonishing. Guys, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It means so much that you guys are interested in what it is that I get up to every day. That is fantastic. 
makes me very, very happy. Dustin, I'm thrilled you got your Forge Steel sticker. That's great to hear, that's great to hear. I don't know if we have one, we have one up, but a cool sticker that I gave away a couple of times ago. Jan said, where's your sledgehammer? Where's your sledgehammer? Uh, Jan, your sledgehammer is being held hostage. Um, context that you guys are not aware of, I'm gonna be releasing this video tomorrow. Friday's video gets released on a Sunday to account for us doing this live show on a Saturday. So, Jan left on Friday and when we put his bags on the scale at the airport, um, they weighed like 75 pounds, something like that. We made a 12 pound sledge that day. Uh, so sadly, we had to take the sledge out of the bag. I then almost dropped the sledge on his foot, much to the amusement of the lady at the checkout counter. Um, and then of course, Jan <laughs> used the wrong like uh, security line and had to go to another one. It was, it was pretty fun, but it means that I'm holding his sledgehammer ransom, which is, uh, which is great. He made a very nice sledgehammer on day five of his class. Okay, doggy. Now let's see how much I need to really squeeze out of there. Did you say it was 130 mil, Sam? Yeah. Thank you. Outstanding. So what have you guys been up to in the shop this year? Charles Anderson, I'm in Norwich in the United Kingdom. Um, not Norwich, is there, where, where's another Norwich? Is it Virginia where there's a Norwich in the US? I'm, I'm not sure, is it Vancouver? Hey, Lau Barrera. Hey, Pete Knight. Great to see you guys. Ah. Where? Connecticut. Well, I hate to be self, to disparage myself, but this is one of the less clean tapers I've done in a while. <laughs> Apologize. Uh, we'll clean it up though. Great. So I just got finished up teaching Jan from Germany a fantastic five day class. It was a huge amount of fun and he did very, very well. Um, he is a teacher at a university in Germany, teaches craft, including blacksmithing, at this university. It's a fine arts university. And so, you know, he had the experience in the craft already, which was great, and a whole amount of, huge amount of help. He wanted to learn tool making, and having done an apprenticeship in stone masonry, artistic uh, stone sculpture, you know, he, he, he understood how to relax and let his body do the work and really give it give it the all in the swing, which was wonderful. He struck with great confidence, great accuracy, you know, swung the hand hammer with great confidence and great accuracy, and was, you know, all around super fun guy to work with. Jan, thank you so much for coming, it's a lot of fun. Thrilled to be holding your sledgehammer ransom. And the, uh, the best thing really is that we got some amazing videos of that class. Whole lot of fun, it was great, and um, if you guys check them out on YouTube, I think you're gonna enjoy them. It's been very exciting. It's, it's almost coming up on a month that I've put out a video on YouTube every single day, uh, which is like a crazy undertaking that you might not be able to believe. And I haven't really like, you know, got into talking about it. But yeah, like I, I want to keep putting out a video every day. 
I think it's really important. YouTube has has been great for me, and it's it's where like the best relationships with you guys are created. I really want to keep fostering that and letting that grow, and so I do want to keep putting out a video every day. And the goal that I've set myself, and I, I feel a little daunted to kind of put it out there because that kind of makes it seem a little more set in stone. But the goal that I've set myself is to make a video every single day for the next year as best I can. Obviously, you know, if I'm traveling somewhere and I don't have access to internet or like there are not enough hours in the day, well, you know, so what? I'll have to try and make it up in other ways. But my goal and plan is to make a video every single day for the next year. Well, coming up to uh, for the next 11 and a bit months. So it started on the 16th of July that I started doing these videos. Matt, it has been an extraordinary amount of fun to do this. It's been a lot of work and I have to say that every day I publish this video and like it's so exciting to see the wonderful, wonderful comments that you all leave. Um, you know, those of you on YouTube who regularly comment, I can't tell you how much that means to me to see, see your names come up, see your wonderful messages uh, about the videos. It seems to be a very enjoyable thing and I'm thrilled that you, uh, that you're all liking it. So, first thing I think I'm going to do, I reckon I'm going to take myself a pretty big fuller, set that right in the middle of this bad boy. So Sam measured up the bangle that I'm currently wearing at a 130 mil. I'm going to give myself a little bit of like fudge factor and I'm going to, you know, this right now is at about 140 mil. I'll give myself a little pinprick with this ball punch and we're going to lay that right in the middle of that bad boy. See if we can swell it out a little bit. This is going to be a totally random piece of design that's going to evolve as it goes. I think I'm going to start from the center, work my way out to either end of it, see how it goes, and then hopefully if we can squeeze it in, we'll see if we can get a second bangle in there tonight. That is fantastic. Christian, thank you so much for your message. Really pleased. Really, really pleased. Uh, Christian, you asked any advice on judging heat colors when you're forging outside. When you're forging outside, uh, get shade. That's kind of like the best option. Um, if sunglasses work to help see the heat, then, then, then do that. But just, you know, put a tarp over yourself. That's, that's a, a very simple option. Get like a pop-up tent. You can get one of those things for like a hundred bucks. Hey, Tucker, today what we're doing is we're making a bangle and we're going to be, you know, using some fun fun punching techniques, use a little inspiration from Jacob Farham, what he does, um, and uh, it's, it's, it's going to be fun, we've got some fun tools, and this is very exciting, it's going to be more of like a creative thing, a um, little less planned, you know, when, how, how long ago did we come up with the solid understanding of what it was we were going to make? 5 to 10. <laughs> at 5 to 10, we went live at 10, well a little bit later, we were casually late. What is the piece of iron behind me to my right here? Hang on the wall over the, oh, I bent it. Hang on the wall over the table. So Sophia DeSantis has asked, what is this piece of iron? This is like, a, I don't know, a little bit of a sculptural mess around, screwing around with some fun bits of, should we go ahead and grab that right here? Screwing around with some fun tools and, and you know, basically just having fun you know, making the steel move in, in, in the plastic ways that it just loves to move. And it's, it's, it's just a fun, fun piece of sculpture, really. And I dropped my tool. And uh, it hangs there because, you know, I like, I like having nice things. Especially when I made them. However, I've bent it, so it looks a little less nice. <laughs> right, let's take another heat. So yeah, that's kind of a, a crazy thing, guys. Expect a YouTube video from me every day for, for the next 11 months. And hey, who knows? Maybe even after that, it's going to be fun. I'm, uh, I'm pumped, 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 pumped to do it. OK, a little bit more. And what is just so exciting is how every single day people comment 
and, 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 and mention how the videos get better and better. Um, something I'm very much trying to do is up, really up the quality every single day, make it a better video, a more enjoyable video, a better flowing video. It's an exciting journey. You know, I'm very much learning the new skill of movie making, you know, filmmaking, videography, editing. These are, these are skills that I'm learning and teaching myself and taking inspiration from others on and taking inspiration from, you know, famous directors on and stuff like that to try and make the videos as, as, as pleasurable to see as possible. You know, so we can get black to as many people as possible. I mean, I think that's really the end goal is to get as many people interested in this stuff as possible. It's a lot of fun. A lot of people should be interested. A lot of people who aren't aware that it exists would be interested. So that's, yeah, that's, why, that's why it's happening, you know. It's a very exciting thing for me. You know, we passed the 10,000 yesterday. That's just brilliant. That's just brilliant. All right, let's move on to this tool. Well, my boat is powered. Um, that's in fact not my boat, that's my father's boat, and that is a, uh, I've forgotten the name of it, but that is a sailboat. However, it does have an outboard engine on it. And uh, I managed to uh, go and make the most of the wonderful British weather today. I actually headed down to the coast and we did get the sails up. Previously, any time I'd headed up there, the, the wind had been pretty, pretty weak. Uh, or too strong, we weren't able to get the sails up. However, today we were and had a, had a nice little sail. And uh, that content, I'll probably try and throw that into the video that'll go out on Monday. So, the video that'll mostly be filmed tomorrow. So, what I'm doing is I'm using this tool to just create that divide. You know, create that divide so we have a nice transition where we can insert some other design work. I think if I... What's going to be exciting to use there? How about two fillers? Run two filler lines. I think that'll be nice and fun. Oh, do I have any that are suitable? There we go. We'll use this. Any tips for working stainless? Any tips for working stainless? Um, I haven't done a whole lot of working stainless. Um, something to bear in mind is that it's very tough to manipulate. It's a, it's a very strong uh, material at those high temperatures. So yeah, you'll have to hit it a little bit harder and keep it a little bit hotter. What you'll also find is due to the fact that it oxidizes only very minimally at the high temperatures, it's actually quite difficult to see what you're doing. Um, interestingly enough, when we are forging one of the only reasons we can really see what we're doing is because of that oxidation, which gives us shadows to really look at what's happening. Because um, that incandescent steel is often a little, a little bit difficult to, to really s spot your lines, spot your edges, spot your high spots. Um, on stainless, you do run into that issue. Uh, you also must consider um, the treatment afterwards. I'm not 100% certain if once you forge stainless, it maintains the same um, properties. You'd have to look into that if you were trying to use stainless for you know, a maritime application where you really needed those corrosion resistant properties. You'd have to look into how to best deal with the stainless after the forging to, uh, to, to make that happen. You know, I don't think this tool's gonna cut it. We're gonna have to use something else. Why don't we take a large ball fuller? I think this will be an exciting one to put in there. Perfect. Fun. Nice, peaceful project. my borax from? I get my borax from eBay. Here in the UK, unlike in the US, where you can buy 20 mule team borax, uh, we only really have, it's, it's not available as a detergent that you can buy, most likely due to some regulatory um, issues that seems to be um, more often than not the case uh, when things aren't available here. So, I, I, I don't know actually, that's just hypothesizing, so who knows? Better not jump to, jump to conclusions, but eBay is the place to get it if you're in the United Kingdom. Can you show people who just 
bangle. So here, here's a, a bangle that, uh, this is the type of bangle that I'm talking about. I don't know if I'm using the correct term. But the one where you have a gap right here, so you can just twist it off and pull it off. That's the type of bangle that we're working on right now. Stick it right there. And this particular one is one that Jacob Farham made, uh, demonstrating it to a group of students that he was teaching here at, uh, here at the workshop last year. And you know, he left this pile, of, uh, this pile of the stuff that he demonstrated, and I said, you know what, that fits, that's gonna be mine. So uh, it was mine, and taking a little bit of inspiration from there, trying to play with some new kind of design thoughts as we go, trying to be as creative as possible, and hopefully make a couple of nice bangles. I think we're going to go back in with this this tool and we're going to frame that off on the other side. See if I can take an appropriate amount of material. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And of course, the, the thing that we must bear in mind when we're doing this is every time we punch in, we are reducing the, you know, the, 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 the strength of that particular area in proportion to what the parent bar was. Uh, and that means that as we bend it, we do have to bear in mind the difficulty of it kinking, the possibility of it kinking in that particular spot. So this is naturally, anytime you do punch work on anything you're gonna bend, you're gonna run into that kinking issue, bear that in mind, you know? Make sure that you've got a, an action plan, which I don't, uh, to, 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 <laughs> to try and avoid that. Really, the way that we're gonna be avoiding that is by taking a wooden mallet when we do it and really forging with a decent amount of force over the horn to really make it conform despite its tendency to want to kink. Where do you get your block brushes from? Where do I get my block brushes? I get the block brushes from farrier supply houses. I recommend no less of a brush than a farrier's block brush. Um, butcher's block brush, I believe they're also called. No less of a brush, they're very aggressive. They'll cut you to shreds when they're brand new. Um, and I get about a year of them, and I use them hard doing those hammers. You know, I'll often dig in with that back side. I get about a year out of them. Um, they're worth every penny. Uh, you know, you're gonna pay about 25 pounds or something like that for them, uh, potentially plus the VAT. I haven't looked up the prices in a while. So you just kind of ignore it, and you, you buy the thing, and you use it, and you will love it. Even if you're a hobbyist, it is worth that and more to have that. Dustin, thank you so much for your comment. Dustin commented saying that he hoped that everybody had shared in their, shared this on their Facebook profiles. Yes, guys, if you're enjoying this and if you want to keep seeing more, if you want to keep seeing more, please, please, please do share it. This applies for the videos that I put out on YouTube, guys. It would mean the world to me and it just means that I can keep making these videos. If you guys go ahead and share it with your friends, it takes a huge amount of effort to put this stuff on and uh, I would sincerely appreciate it. If you could share it with your friends and keep spreading the message, that's what we're all here for. Okay, so I reckon I'm gonna now take an even smaller filler. Smaller bob punch, how about that? Continue on this theme. Beautiful. Wh who else is saying stuff, Sam? What's going on? What's going on on YouTube? I know we don't often check that quite as much. We're, we're discussing block brushes still. Block brushes. Just like where you get them from in the UK. Yeah, yeah. And you want to make sure you get one that has the wooden handle on it. Um, I, I've seen folks make a steel handle for one that doesn't have the handle. The issue you come into there is one often doesn't make a steel handle that's quite meaty enough, you know, it's often a little bit thin, you want that extra meat so you've got something good to grip on so you can really go for it with the block brush. So buy one with a handle on it, don't skimp out in that respect. Okay, so what tools do we have? I think we're going to run this teeny weeny fuller down the center of it then we'll be able to cut it off, begin the bending process, and move on to the next one. This is very much exciting, guys. I'm pleased to do this more calm project. 
Um, it's, 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 it's just great. It's just great to hang out with you all. You know, I'm often amazed when we do this live stream. It's funny from my perspective because I'm speaking into a funny little camera. But um, it's exciting because I have, a, I have a relatively small workshop. Yet, I mean, how many of you guys, ha how many are viewing on Facebook? 54 plus 64, okay, I should not put numbers in my head out loud when I can't do maths. Uh, 104, 100, 120, 54 with plus 64? Okay, okay, ish is a great way of putting it if you can't do maths. I'm just a stupid blacksmith. 120-ish, you know, we get, got 120 of you guys crammed into this workshop, like that's crazy. Imagine if you were all here we would not be able to swing a hammer, it would be so jam-packed. So this is, this is just a very exciting thing for me. Every single week we do this, to just imagine that, yeah, you know, we can, we can fit 120 of you in here, and that just makes me so happy. That makes me so happy to have you all here, uh, whether you're here or you're not. So I'm trying to run two fuller lines, however that one has got a little off track, so we've got to see if we can fix that. Oh, I don't think so. I think that little attempt was a little mistake. Let's see if they can converge to any decent degree. You know, because of that, I don't know if you're able to zoom in on that, Sam. I know that that exposure is a little high. Hang on a second. Let me adjust it first. Oh, okay. If you zoom in right here, what you'll see is, is that this piece was just ever so slightly rhombused, and that long side was out here. So when I go ahead and hit that with that fuller, it tends to want to topple over, and you'll see that it's swollen out a lot more, you know? so. What I'm gonna go ahead and do to fix that is I'm going to take a larger fuller or even potentially a ball fuller and run it in there and see if we can just swell it out a little bit more to avoid that. I just felt that that was a little bit too, eh, it, it wasn't quite playing out. That's how it is. You know, this is part of the experimentation process is we keep trying things, hopefully, and, uh, and eventually maybe we have some level of success. Canada. I will travel anywhere you want me to travel to. Come to. If San can come to. that'll be able to allow us to maintain a decent degree of aesthetically pleasingness. That's English, by the way, if, uh, if you're curious. Beautiful. Do you hate your fullers? Sorry? Do you hate your fullers? With these hand tools, I tend to do a lot of kind of colder temperature work like this. As a result, I do heat treat most of the hand tools. They get used a decent amount for doing your colder temperature laying out. And it's just, it's nice to be able to know that you can do that cold laying out. For example, here, I wanna lay this next one out cold so I don't make another mistake. It's nice to be able to know that you can do the laying out procedure without damaging the tools. Now, when I'm dealing with top tools, and now remember, of course, I'm dealing with top tools and I'm dealing with often beginner strikers every single day. When I'm dealing with top tools, I leave them unhardened, completely unhardened. You would certainly never want to harden the striking end of a, 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 a struck tool, um, but I don't harden even the working end of any of my struck tools. I don't want to risk having any mishits cause the tool to 
hit something and bounce off or take a chip out of something. Like that's not something that I want to have any risk of. And so none of the top tools that are getting struck are hardened in case they get driven into an anvil, etc., etc., etc. But of course, you know, that risk is mitigated against by having a mild steel anvil. So we don't have too much of a worry even if it was hardened. But I'm quite happy to, you know, potentially have to maintain a little more regularly by not hardening. Having said that, I don't think I've ever maintained the working end of any of my non-hardened tools. You know, it's all hot, it's all hot work. So, you know, I, I've contradicted myself. You know, there's, I've never even had to maintain the working end of any of them. Um, so that's great. So the tools used in this project, Jeremy, um, this, is, this is interesting. That's a great question. I really appreciate you asking. I will show them. I'm going to put them on the anvil now. Um, you might need to man the zoom if that's all right, Sam. Thank you so much. So the tools used so far have been, firstly, uh, let me go ahead and grab that larger ball fella. Here we go. Ooh, there's a fly trying to fly in my ear. It's tickling. The first tool we used was this large ball fuller. You can see this is upset from a piece of three quarter inch round. It's just upset and then uh, you forge a slight ball on it and then that's ground to finish. So that was the first tool we used. Then I went ahead and used my touch mark and I put my touch marks imprint into the work. This is simply filed out of a piece of coil spring that has a rectangular taper on it. We then used a smaller ball fuller with a diameter of about half an inch. You can see the radius like that. It's not a semi-circle, not a semi-sphere, not a hem not a half sphere. Hemisphere? I believe hemisphere would be the term. Neither is this, they're more squashed out balls, and this is a oh, about a three-eighths inch diameter ball fuller. And then of course we go down to this, which is a certain style of farum fuller, which is almost like a ball fuller, cut in half, cut down the middle. And it's, it's, it's a very exciting tool to use. You'll see right here the kind of general shape of it. And this is like a fuller slash butcher. It's a fuller butcher combo. And um, it's wonderful for dividing materials in somewhat aesthetic ways. This is a project that we did on one of the previous live shows. And that used the farm fuller quite a decent amount. You can see in here, it's a little bit dirty. There we go, right there, a little bit dirty. But uh, that was the use of the farm fuller. Okay, let's give this a little brush. So Sam, are you still on for doing next week's show? Yeah. Okay guys, you've heard it from the man himself. You all know what's happening next week. We've been talking about it long enough. Next week, the man himself, Sam Fowler, he and I are switching places. He is going to be coming on this side of the camera. I'm going to go on the other side of the camera. And he is going to give a, what would be the best way of phrasing, a horse shoemaking shoe demonstration. So as a farrier, of course, he is working with horses every day and is you know, caring for their feet and making sure that they're properly shod for the, uh, for the work that they do. And so he's going to give us a wonderful demonstration I've already set you up. It's got to be a wonderful demonstration, Sam. Aluminium. Aluminium shoes. Is that just so it, so you can, you know, screw up the American crowd? Yeah, aluminum. It's not aluminum. <laughs> it's aluminium. So he's going to screw up the American crowd by uh, using the real English words by making aluminium shoes. Oh, Mika Verduin has asked the most important question of the year. There have been memes made about this question. There have been, there have been threads on Facebook with hundreds of comments. There seems to be a bifurcation of the blacksmithing community over this one topic. This is a controversial topic, and that is one of Brian Brazil style hock at Hardy's, tapered shank, curved edge, very thin blade, Brian Brazil style hock at Hardy's, and London patterned anvils. There have been rumors about them breaking anvils. 
In fact, actually, there haven't been rumors. People have just completely, fr completely and blatantly lied about it to try and uh, to try and dissuade people from using the Brown Brazil Hopcat Hardy. There have been rumors about it, um, which aren't really rumors. Just people trying to you know scare people away from using it. It's been a really interesting debate hearing people who are saying that the Brown Brazil Hopcat Hardy, which has a tapered shank and works by locking your hot cut into the anvil to reduce movement so you can increase efficiency. They say that it will snap the heel off. Um, hey, I, I'll admit, I don't know. After 30 years, might it snap the heel off? I don't know. Brian came up with this thing in 1999, I believe. And so quite an interesting story as to how he came up with it. Um, Brian, pardon me if I misquote you. This is my understanding from having heard the story a few years ago is a lady came to him asking if he would make a hot cut for her husband's anvil. And, you know, the, the time went on before his birthday and he had said, look, I need his anvil so I can make the hot cut. And, you know, he, he didn't get the anvil so he couldn't make a hot cut. The day before the birthday, she came back again, really wanting the hot cut. And so he came up with the idea to make a hot cut that could double as a handheld hot cut and also potentially be used in an anvil, no matter the size of the hardy hole, due to its tapered uh, shank design. And he came up with it, and he made it, and he used it, and he thought to himself, huh, you know what? That thing actually works pretty darn well. It works pretty darn well. I'm able to cut more efficiently, he thought. He's able to, like, cut steel that would, would never be thought you could cut with a hand hammer and a hot cut. Um, as far as I understand, this is not hyperbolic for me to say, but Brian cuts on a mounted anvil, can cut two inch round 4140 in one heat on the hot cut, um, which is an extraordinary feat that would never be able to be achieved on any other hot cut. The reason for the supreme performance of, of this hot cut is it is locked in, meaning it, it, it is not going to move. You're not going to lose energy to vibration. Your hammer blow is going directly into the workpiece. Again, a critical reason as to why you ideally want to mount your anvil. Um, it is also due to the fact that the blade is very thin, thanks to its design, you know, I mean, it's a very thin blade. And that, there's one other reason. I knew it. I knew there was another reason. I'm getting distracted thinking about measurements rather than thinking about the workpiece. And it has this curved edge, which further reduces the surface area contact with the material, meaning that number one, your hot cut edge is not going to get as hot, which means that you're not taking as much heat away from the steel. And number two, there's less surface area contact resisting your blow as you forge it. Um, so a lot of people seem to think that this hot cut is going to break their anvil. Um, naturally, I could understand, I can totally empathize with why that that might be your assumption, as it is a, a taper that you're driving into a square hole. And ultimately, if you were to drive a taper into a square hole long, far, long enough, you would break said hole or just drift it to a large size. I can totally empathize with your concern over that happening. However, we must consider the design and nature of a hot cut hardy is firstly for cutting hot. And when it is a hot material and when you have such a shallow angle of an edge, such a thin edge with this taper, it means that when we forge, we're putting all of the work into the material rather than into the anvil. You know, it's just like if you were to take a top hot cut and compare it to a flatter. You strike the same amount of blows as hard as you can on a top hot cut cutting hot steel. Strike the same amount of blows as hard as you can on a flatter striking a hot piece of steel. What you're likely to find is that the mushrooming on the flatter is going to be much more severe than on the top hot cut. As when you strike that top hot cut, that, 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 that hot cut is moving straight away into the material. Same thing with the anvil. Your, move, your, your material is moving straight into the hot cut without as much energy being dissipated into the anvil. So there is less, there is less stress placed in the hole. Of course, if you were to use a fuller where there's much larger surface area contact, much more energy being dissipated through into the anvil due to the greater resistance of the material thanks to the larger surface area contact, you would end up wedging that thing in there with such a tremendous amount of force, you might well break your, break your heel. Um, but the hot cut used for cutting hot steel now 
You don't want to go bearing away with a sledgehammer holding, cutting cold steel. That's ridiculous and unsafe to do that. Firstly, um, you're, you're likely not to run into this. I've never heard of anybody snapping their London pattern anvil with a Brian Brazil style hot cut. And I would be surprised if I ever did hear of anybody doing that to an anvil that wasn't already compromised. There's simply not a huge amount of force being put into the hardy hole. Right, what's going on on YouTube? How are you guys all doing? 76 of you, my god. How do I, how do I do this thing? Come on now, work. What's going on on YouTube, Sam? Is anybody saying anything? They're just talking about themselves. Great, I love that. Oh, thank you so much, Sam. I really appreciate that. There we go. So I'm going to take a little piece of chalk. Uh, you sure it was 140 mil? 130. Huh. I think I'll just measure it real quick, just to make sure. What do I think of my older videos? Um, I think that, firstly, I'm very pleased that they're out there because that certainly shows my progression and the result of having made those videos was I learned a great deal about demonstration and teaching that otherwise I absolutely would not have learnt. So putting out the videos was very important in my own personal development as a blacksmith. I'm thrilled to have... Sam, do you know how to read a tape measure. Yeah. <laughs> it's 157. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It'll be all right, actually. I, I was a little bit skeptical of the measurement, and so I, I accounted for a little extra in case you needed to cut it off. So, sorry, Sam. I, I hate to... Uh, to defend... De <laughs> defile your name live on air. Let's cut this bad boy off. Yeah, I'm, it must have been bad tape measure, right guys? Bad tape measure, I'm sure it was. What's that behind you? What is what behind me? This grill. Um, so, a couple years ago, oh my goodness, time flies. A couple years ago I had a week or however long it was, didn't have anything to do and I had a stick of 16 mil square and I thought, you know what, I wanna do something cool and one night when I was sleeping in the workshop, I took a piece of chalk and I rolled over from my cot and I just went <laughs> and I chalked this idea out in my head uh, onto the floor, woke up the next morning, thought, you know, what's cool, took the 16 mil square and just started making stuff since I had that, uh, those free days. But um, you can see I've been somewhat busy since as this is missing it. It's likely to be some sort of, you know, small garden gate. Sometimes I often uh, consider that I'd quite like to put it out here in my workshop. I think that would be nice to have that gate there. Um, you know, just something to show when you walk in, something to be proud of when you walk into a workspace, be proud of the work that you've done. I think that's important, you know, especially when you're in an industrial area like this where it's a little bit, you know, a little bit rough around the edges. Certainly the workshop is too. Having nice things to appreciate, you know, nice handmade things, I think that's a fantastic, fantastic and extremely important thing. My tongue making class? Someone's asked on YouTube if you offer a tongue making class only. Uh, well, my private classes are very much tailored to the individual. What you see on my website, uplashmakingtools.co.uk, um, where you can see details about the classes that I offer, you see mostly the tool forging classes, and so that's what people are mostly interested in. However, yes, I will work with you. If you want to learn something in particular, and I know how to do it, I'd, I'd, I'd love to teach you it. It would be my absolute pleasure. So if you want to do a tongue making class, hey, go ahead and get in touch. Send me a Facebook message at uh, facebook.com forward slash Alex Steel Blacksmith on my Facebook page and, uh, and we can work something out.
Hey Derek, thank you so much for the message. Really appreciate it, Alec. Why did I say Alec? Oh, it's because I read somebody else saying Alec. I meant Derek, but I said Alec. I, I, yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. Right, let's, let's cut off this piece of steel. Let's do enough talking for, for just a few seconds. Let's get some forging done. Hey, you know, what's the... I still need to make those t-shirts. Less yak yak, more whack whack. I think the yak yak's pretty fun. Okay. Let's see how this works. Go ahead and cut it off right about there. That looks somewhat, has somewhat a level of, of symmetry. And I'm not going to be too concerned about a cut to the center at this stage. I'm going to have to file it anyway. Forge that just a little bit. Come over to the horn. Taper it down accordingly. This is, a, this is a fun and exciting thing. You know, I think I need to adjust the exposure on this thing. What is what going on? What friends say about being a famous blacksmith? I'm not a famous blacksmith. I just have fun hitting, hitting hot metal, really. So, it's <laughs> about all there is to it. Now, a little bit better exposure with me. Just pull that aperture a little bit back to how it was. Oh. Ah. There we go. That should be a little bit better. Now I'm going to go ahead and break this off with a pair of toggles. I didn't mean to zoom you guys in though. Oh, that's out. What does he say? Hey, if you guys, if you guys want to send me your, desi your, your, your design ideas for t-shirts, yeah, absolutely. I, I would love to see it, Frederick. Thank you so much. And. Hey, if I like it and we do t-shirts, I will for sure send you a couple of those t-shirts. Like, that's the least I can do. I mean, that would be amazing of you. I'd love to see it. Um, naturally, doing videos every day has made me somewhat, I say somewhat, um, uh, <laughs> has made me extraordinarily uh, uh, busy and, and occupied doing other things. So I haven't had time to sit down and you know, draw up some some interesting designs on Illustrator so that you guys can have some more t-shirts since I've just been so busy. I mean, every day it's quite the time commitment to produce those videos. However, I'm not saying that begrudgingly. It is an absolute pleasure to produce these videos and, 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 and put out this, this entertaining and um, hopefully to a certain degree artistic forging content. It's, 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 it's an exciting, exciting thing to be doing. and. Um, it does mean that I sacrifice the ability of doing other things, such as designing t-shirts. So Frederick, if you would like to make me some, some t-shirt designs, I would be just so thrilled. I'd be extraordinarily thrilled. All right, let's see if we can bend this to any sort of, uh, any sort of reasonable degree. Thank you, Sam. I really appreciate that. Do we get any noise complaints? No, we don't. I have never had a noise complaint, and you know what? If any of my neighbors are watching, you guys are amazing. Truly, this is something that I am constantly astounded by. Like, I am the worst neighbor to have. I make the most noise out of everybody, and my workshop stinks, because like, you know, actually no, it doesn't. I don't really burn coal. It, it smells all right. Maybe it's just like, because all the, all, the, all the fumes have like burnt out my, uh, my smelling capabilities, but no, it smells all right. But I make the most noise, running these power hammers, it is, oh my good lord. You, like the ground is vibrating four units over, because they're all next door to door to door to door to door. The ground vibrates four units over, and you know, there's, there's, there's a poor guy that's trying to do some beautiful sculptural work in, in clay with his classical music, and you know, he does beautiful art. Then all of a sudden, me, you know, Rufty, you know, uh, <laughs> that annoying bloody British blacksmith shows up, turns on three, three loud machines, starts making so much noise that you can hear it right at the end of the road. And what amazing neighbors I have that they don't complain. We are on an industrial estate, so I guess a little bit of an assumption is that, yes, we, people make a noise on an industrial estate, but I've never had a complaint. Um, and I just am amazed and so grateful that I'm able to do this stuff. Like, that's, that, that, that wouldn't be possible in, in, in any other location. 
Okay, Jason Rin... Ooh. Jason Rinaldo. What a wonderful name. I apologize if I shouldn't have said it with the accent. Um, has asked me how long a tank of propane lasts me. Of course, um, much... <laughs> how long is this... It, it, there are variables to it, uh, such as how I'm running the forge. Right now, I'm running it at a somewhat low uh, pressure, which means that we are using less gas. Again, I want to reiterate, the pressure that you're running on it um, is not directly, uh, does not directly correlate to the amount of gas you're using. It also depends on the size of the orifice. So bear that in mind. It's not all about pressure. It's also about the size of the orifice that you're pumping the gas through. And that is where your consumption comes into play. In this particular case, I'm running it at a low pressure, and due to the fact that the variable of the orifice stays the same, despite the pressure differentials, it means that we're using different, uh, smaller amount of gas, right? So right now, I'd probably get 45 to 50 hours out of that tank running it how it is, maybe. Um, and that, that, that'd be up there, that'd be up there to being pretty good, pretty good fuel economy. Now, when I'm doing the tool making classes, we're working larger pieces of steel, yeah. Yes, I will decrease the fuel economy uh, potentially by half. You know, it might mean that uh, that I get 25 to 30 hours out of a propane bottle. But that's all right. You know, it's, it's about doing the class, making sure we get through it in decent enough time, making sure that steel heats up in decent enough time, and that's that's quite happy. Um, either way, though, it's naturally if you're burning coke that you're able to get from the mine for like a hundred bucks a ton. Yeah, I totally appreciate that gas is going to be more cost prohibitive for you. But if you don't live in such an area where coal mining is so prolific, um, I assure you that propane is likely not to be, uh, not to be eh, significantly more expensive than burning solid fuel. Uh, in fact, here in the United Kingdom, I'm probably spending less money burning propane than I would be if I was burning coke, as coke here uh, obviously, depending on the conversion rates, I mean, we're talking in pounds, obviously, we're talking about 550 pounds a ton, and, you know, where the dollar is usually, you know, that's, that's getting up to about 750 or $800 per ton of coke. Well, that's a decent amount of money that, naturally, if you're in coal country, you don't experience. Uh, Trig is asking if you can still get mocked and coke. Yes, you can still get mocked and coke. My understanding is they have reserves of uh, a couple hundred tons, or, or at least last time I heard, a couple hundred tons of reserve um, before they no longer are able to provide it. That's uh, all interesting stuff. And it's one of the reasons I'm quite pleased to have made the switch to gas is I, I don't have to get onto a different fuel source. But uh, having said that, all of the Cokes, <laughs> Coke sources we have in the United Kingdom, they're, they're quite terrible. Uh, it's, it's, it's always terrible fuel to use. And I certainly know somebody who can attest to that. Have we seen any of, any of Joey today? Has he been commenting? Well, if you guys just tag Joey Vanderst, like if you're friends with Joey Vanderst, go ahead and tag him in this. Or if you're here, Joey, go ahead and let us know in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Love, love, love to hear your thoughts on the coke that we have here in Britain as well as the anthracite. He came here and he filmed an online course teaching forge welding um, a few months ago now in May, May April, last late April. He came and taught and of course we were using solid fuel uh, to demonstrate, you know, kind of assuming that most people, you know, there's a lot of fire management that goes into it, assuming that most... <laughs> we did, did they? <laughs> There's a lot of fire management that goes into it, so we did do it in solid fuel, assuming that most people do solid fuel. And, um, and yeah, if he, if, he, if he shows up, he'll let you know. He'll let you know. It's his birthday, isn't it? So he's gonna Shh. Be uh, I, I hadn't considered that. Okay, well, uh, somebody tag. Somebody tag Joey. Nobody's tagged Joey. Joey. Okay, I'm gonna have to do it. Oh, it's not coming up. Oh well, I can't do it. Somebody tag Joey Van Der Steek. That'd be lovely. So 
gonna see how much we have to trim off of this. Oh, we're pretty close. We're just gonna have to take a little fraction off. So I'm gonna take a little slither off both sides, and I'll do that with a pop cut. Sorry? Oh, absolutely, Sam. Absolutely correct, it's a great job. Thanks, Trig, really appreciate it. What fun. That's great having you guys here. Nice to do a little more relaxed, relaxed show. Okay, Nath, thank you so much. Working with iron, I really appreciate your question. So, as far as I recall, the way you measure your bangle is what you do is you take a piece of paper, lay it all the way around your, arm, your wrist, where you plan to have it, take that measurement, then grip your fingers together so that they're touching that bone, take a measurement that is that width, subtract that from the overall circumference of your wrist so that naturally the circumference allows for us to slip it through, pop onto the wrist. Then it's just a simple case of twisting it, pulling it off. So it's circumference minus the thickness where you intend to slide it on. Thank you so much for the comment, Nate. Really four appreciate it. Four day course in November. Yeah. Is it one or uh, The four day course in November is a group class here. Maximum of four people, two stations. So that means that it's a great one to come with if you've got a friend. Um, something like that because, you know, we're going to have the two stations, one in here, over there. I'll be going between the two, helping guide you both uh, as you work in a team of two throughout the process to do it. That is regarding the four day course in November. How often do I get burned when I'm working on stuff? What a fantastic question. Um, the answer would likely be to phrase it, when do I not get burned when I'm working on stuff? Um, I get burned every single day, especially when I do a tool making class, as there's a lot of flying scale and your hands are right where the scale flies. So, yeah, I get, I get burned every single day. And it's funny, you know, um, Anybody that's taken a class in the past uh, little while where we've had a few more wasps as it's the summertime will attest to the truth and reality that is that I'm petrified of wasps. Uh, Jan, I think, saw this firsthand a few days ago. I'm absolutely petrified of wasps despite the fact that every single day I get, bar <laughs> I get burned to an equivalent degree of pain as a wasp sting without fail every day. You know, a piece of scale lands on you, it's, it's just, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's not an insignificant amount of pain. No, I cut that off. Yet I'm still completely petrified of wasps. Um, they are the wonderful irrationalities and inconsistencies that my, uh, my subconscious has against wasps. So, sorry wasps, but I hate you. And if I see you, I'll kill you. Yeah, Jan killed one, and I, whew, I was happy about that. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Wasp. Let's go ahead and gently lock that in the vise. And I want to be gentle with it, as I do not want to damage it by gripping too hard. Too hard. Rust over some smooth edges. Fantastic. Oh, that definitely. Tips to upgrading a gas forge. Well, if you have a commercially made forge, the issue you might well run into is that your burners point straight down at the steel. The reason this is an issue is that you create a hot spot in the forge. You really want to make sure that you throw that flame in in such a way that it's dissipating as best as possible throughout the chamber of the forge. Um, the way that you do this is you make sure that on the round, here we go, this is a great way of demonstrating it if I can. There we go. On the round that is your forge, rather than pointing the burner in straight from, I, I'm somewhat gravitationally challenged. Straight from the top. Okay, why don't we do this, guys? Pretend that the forge is upside down. Rather than pointing the burner in straight from the top, which is now the bottom, but straight from the top of the forge, pointing straight down at the steel, creating a hot spot, you would ideally want to reposition the burner so that it comes in from the side 
shoots the flame around and creates that turbulence inside the forge so that you further dissipate the flame, create more of an even heat. And it means that you're, you're spending a little more time, that flame takes a little more time getting to the steel. And my theory from a layman's uh, perspective is that that means that your flame is going to be in less, as the flame contacts the steel, it's less of an oxidizing part of the flame. It's more of a neutral part of the flame and so you can mitigate against over, overly oxidizing the material by making sure that you travel the flame as long as possible, as long as the distance as possible before you hit the steel. What's the youngest age you'd take for a class? Youngest age I'd take for a class? Prob it, it, it depends, obviously. If somebody's like motivated and keen to learn, 11 um, would probably be about it. Like that's when I started. Um, but like you've got to be motivated and keen to learn. Don't. Don't, don't send anybody here for a class who didn't ask for the class themselves because you think it's going to be fun for them. They're not going to have like the motivation and the desire to learn. I don't know. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm making blanket statements. I shouldn't make blanket statements. I'm not sure. I just feel more comfortable with a young person, um, you know, because of you know, because of the, the safety risk. Yeah, make sure they're kind of, you know they're passionate about it. They're pumped about it. Uh, if they want to come take a class, make sure they've done research beforehand that's really going to help them and, uh, and, and, and they'll do fine. Leveling up uh, would be great. That's when I started and that's when, that's when the bug of blacksmithing hit me and it's been a huge, amount of, a huge amount of fun ever since and I certainly would not want to dissuade anybody from blacksmithing because they were too young but I think that you know the youngest age that we could manage here would be 11 provided they have that enthusiasm about the craft which I'm sure I'm sure they will. I mean hey Sam do you at all recall what it was like to be 11 years old, right? Like, there are only two things you want to do. You want to play with fire, and you want to hit stuff really hard. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I ever wanted to do uh, before even doing this stuff. And then I started doing this stuff, and I'm like, well, hey, I'm, I'm sorted. The first thing I ever forged, I forged a tennis racket. A small little tennis racket out of a galvanized tent stake that very nearly gave me metal fume fever, presumably. <laughs> Don't forge galvanized material, you will hurt yourself. Uh, very small, out of five mil round wire. A little, little, little tennis racket, I think. That was the first one or two things I made. Then I tried making a leaf. Um, and uh, then I burnt myself on the face with said leaf at high velocity. <laughs> this isn't a hammer. And I had a, a, a huge amount of fun, really. The first forge was in the backyard. It was a pile of bricks on the ground with a, a lilo pump, you know, a pump used for pumping up an inflatable boat. Used as my, as, as my air source to the charcoal. I don't know why I wouldn't have just used a hairdryer. And that heated up the lumpwood charcoal and I was able to forge for the first time. And I think that that is one of the better ways of getting your introduction to forging without an instructor is, yeah, you take a pile of bricks, same way I demonstrated my online course, it, teaches people how to start blacksmithing the first time. You take a pile of bricks, you lay them in the ground, a little better than I did first in, in, in the course. Demonstrates a, a little bit of a better way. You lay them in the ground. From the comfort of your own home, you can start forging with simply a block of steel as an anvil. Um, I think that oftentimes we over glorify the London pattern anvil or any other pattern of anvil, and it could potentially dissuade somebody from taking up the craft of blacksmithing as they are oftentimes quite expensive um, in certain parts of the world. And in reality, you can do a lot of forging on just a block of steel that you might well be able to find at your steel supplier, uh, your local steel supplier, or at your scrapyard. You'll notice in the classes that I do, we do almost all of the hand forging work on one of the Brazil die anvils that I own. And that is because I I really want to take it to the basics. I want to take it to the simplest form, the most important form, and that is that almost all forging occurs in that one little strip on your anvil. That's all that counts. The Brazil die anvil really simplifies things. And I wanted to show people, look, you do not need an expensive anvil to start blacksmithing. You need a block of mild steel and the willingness, the desire, the, 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 the motivation to be creative, problem solve, and forge. Focus on the forging. Let's not get bogged down in what anvil we're using. And so, wait, what was the question? I've really gone off topic. That was really off topic. 
That was very off topic. I, uh, I, I'm not going to apologize for rambling. I think that was an important thing to be said. Uh, this is, uh, I, I intend to dedicate a video to this soon enough. I, I, I don't want people to get dissuaded from practicing the craft of blacksmithing because they fear the cost of animals. I want people to get encouraged to do it and to start enjoying it and excelling the craft of blacksmithing because they're actually doing it. You know, that's the important thing to me. So let's see if this fits. Give it a little bit of a cool off. There we go. Comes right across the wrist. There we go. I'll just go ahead and pick that up a little. Oh, ah! Sorry about that, guys. There we go. There, uh, 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 uh. Well, I mean, it probably would have been better, but it is done now. So you can see this is what I'm talking about. It fits, fits across the wrist. Then you simply slide it all the way over, twist it on, and there is your bangle. Zoom in a little bit. Oh, that's out. Zoom in a little bit, and you'll see that bangle. What time are we on, Sam? 20 past 11. 20 past 11. Yeah, we can go in a little while. Do you guys want to see me make another bangle? If you guys want to see me make another bangle, we'll extend this, and we'll go ahead and make another bangle. I'm feeling pretty good, and I'm quite happy to do it if you want to do it. But if you don't want to do it, then like, what are we going to do? If you want to see me... Something else. I'll make a suggestion. You've got to make, okay. ten, got to make it in 10 minutes. I've got to make it in 10 minutes. Yeah. A suggestion that I have to make in 10 minutes. Hey, I'm up for a little challenge. Obviously, it's got to be doable in 10 minutes. It's got to be doable in 10 minutes. Come ask us now, don't have it. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, here's what we're going to do, guys. Do you want to switch to the, the big screen so I can show them how excited I am? I am going to make something in 10 minutes flat, and I want your suggestion as to what to make in 10 minutes flat. I have a couple different bits of steel, and we're going to do it in under 10 minutes somehow. Considering everything that I usually do in 10 minutes takes about an hour and 40 on this show, this is going to be exciting. This is going to be like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hammer hard on this one. We'll really, we'll really nail it. So, what do you want to see? Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay, let's, I'm gonna read your comments, guys. I'm gonna read your comments. Let me see what tools I have. Okay, I've got this. Oh, I've got that. You know what? Oh, do I have any copper? Hey, I'm gonna run over there and see if I have any copper real quick. Do you wanna play in that intro video? That'd be great, that'd be great. We'll see you guys in just a few seconds, a minute. In one minute. to make a ring and to make a bottle opener. Well, here's the problem. I didn't have any copper, and I, I, I want to do a ring out of copper. You know what, I'm gonna get myself some silver, I think, and the next adornment show will make a silver ring uh, because of that very question. So if you want to see a silver, well, I should have phrased it the other way. This is like, I don't have any leverage at this point to really like bargain you guys into sharing this stream, but I'll go ahead and give it a go. Well, this is, this is how low I'm gonna go. If you want to see me forge silver 
and make a silver ring on the next show in two weeks. Because next show, who's going live? It's Sam Fowler. Sam Fowler the Fairy is going live next weekend. But in two weeks, if you want to see me forge silver and forge a silver ring, go ahead and share this stream right freaking now. Because what we're going to do is we're going to make a bottle opener. And shoot, I forgot a tool. <laughs> and we're not counting the 10 minutes right now. Yeah, yeah. Not when I said it. No, you, well, come on now, Sam. That's just ridiculous. Uh, could you, I have a plate in there that has a series of holes that I used to drift over. Uh, there might also be a drift on that table. A, a 16 millimeter round drift that is a slot opening drift. Okay, here's the one tool. I hope you haven't dropped anything on your toe. Thank you so much. Is, was there a larger one in there per chance? It might well be underneath the anvil. I love being prepared for these shows, like extreme preparation is a key. So we're only going to start the counter once I've cut this thing off. Ah, not quite, sadly. We're only going to start the counter once I've cut this thing off, once it's back in the fire, and when we first strike the process of beginning to make the bottle opener. You know, I, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to make it a little easier on myself by not counting this time. We've got to get our tools in order. Remember, we planned, but well, we didn't really plan, but we had uh, set in mind one thing to do, and now, sadly, that's not quite. <laughs> it's okay, Sam. I, 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 I hate to Maybe use. In the 10 minutes you can make one as well. Sorry? In the 10 minutes you can make one as well. If I, you know what? I actually can if I've got the, uh, the material. Sam, there should be some 16 millimeter round bar on the forge. On the forge? I'll just make the drift real quick. It should be mild steel. Yes, that is the one. Is there a shorter piece per chance? Not per chance. So British, eh? And I'll just go ahead and make the drift. Ooh, that's bad. Don't want to burn my electrical cable. Safety first. Perfect. Okay, so I'll make a drift. Easy peasy. Now you guys get to see me make a bottle opener and a drift in 10 minutes. We're going to see how it goes. Um, this could well be a l very large failure. Uh, but wait, hang on a second, we're not starting the 10 minute timer now. We just, bam, bam, no, 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 no. We don't start the timer now, guys. We do not start the timer now. That's not, don't worry about it, Sam. It's all good. We're going to start the timer when I start forging steel. Let's bear that in mind. Okay, folks. So I need to make sure I've got my tools set up. This is quite the chaos right now. That's all right. Chaos is pretty fun sometimes. It, it's usually not. So this tong is going to go right there. No, this tong, I'm going to definitely need that. Guys, can like entertain yourselves among the comments for a few seconds while I just do my whole scatterbrained routine. I'm definitely going to need this tool. Absolutely. Do, 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 and a and large. I, that's probably too large. No, they'll be fine, thanks, Sam. Boom, there's a large eye. There's a small eye. And just in case, we'll put that right there. I'll talk to myself and mumble a little more. What is your opinion of Lyle Wynn? My opinion of Lyle Wynn, fantastic blacksmith. Even better human being, a great guy, does great classes. The people that take Lyle's classes in Brandon, Mississippi, go away with incredible tools and likely an amazing amount of knowledge to boot. If you want to go take a great tool making class, Lyle Wynn does a great tool making class in Brandon, Mississippi. You know, and hey, he's, he's a fantastic blacksmith. Okay, so I'm about to get ready for this. See how hot our steel is. I want it to be a little bit harder. This, my friends, is going to be fun when we start this timer. No, 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 that's not, that's not what's happening. Okay, this is going to go right there. Boom, boom, boom. I need to have these. Probably at the ready to some degree or, or another. Have those ready. Right there. Oh, a little bit more heat. Come on now. 
So while we do this 10 minute one, I'm probably going to try my best to do a little bit less talking. I'm sure you'll appreciate that under the time pressure, <laughs> there might be a little less communication between you all. Yak, yak. Lots of yak, yak, not too much whack, whack. Sorry, Brian. Hey, if you want more yak, if you want more whack, whack and a little less yak, yak, I've got online courses. You know, you can go ahead and buy those. <laughs> Do we have the coupon code up? Live 20 gets you 20% off any online course. Paul, just to answer the question, someone, someone said, what's your big power hammer? And I was about to say it's Jan, and someone else, Paul, just put his big hammers back in Germany. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, the big power hammer's back in Germany. I, I like that. Very well, very well said. Hey, Uncle Toby, great to see you catching the stream. Dragon Con's best. I'm thrilled to hear you're taking a class with Lyle. That rocks. That rocks. That rocks. Dustin, I'm not doing it to a time limit. It could all go horribly wrong. Cool. <laughs> Especially with the aluminum. 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 Okay, you guys ready? We've done enough waiting around. Here is where it's gonna begin. I'm, can you get your phone? and go ahead and like set a timer up for me yeah, and then that's ah, alright we'll, we'll just go hard for 10 we'll just go hard for it no you know what I'll just do it on mine it'll be fine that way you can keep you can go ahead and ask answer, you know see if anybody's asking any questions so I'm gonna go ahead and get a timer I'm gonna set it to 10 minutes when the timer ends there's gonna be an alarm now here's the thing if I get this done in 10 minutes. The deal I want is every single one of you to go onto my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Alex Steele with an E. Find your favorite video from the last month and share that on your Facebook page. There is no way that I can hold you accountable for this. There is no way I can see if you did not do this. The only reason I'm asking you is I'm asking you from the bottom of my heart to help share the craft of blacksmithing and help get my YouTube channel to as many people as possible. Because I am trying my best to put out the best content I can put out ever. And I want it to, I want it to resonate with a lot of people and show them just how much fun this craft of blacksmithing is. So, if I get this done in 10 minutes, that is the deal guys. I'm going to make a drift and a bottle opener in 10 minutes. And then you're going to go onto my YouTube channel and you're going to share the stream. Sam, can you go ahead and like post the, uh, the YouTube channel link? If you just, it should be easy enough to find. I'm going to go ahead and start the timer. Here we go. So this is a piece of 16 millimeter round. And I'm going to go ahead and forge a taper, nice and aggressive over the far edge of the anvil. Now I should be said, my thumb is kind of hurting a little bit. I think I knocked it on something a little while ago. So this is going to be making a drift. I'm just rough octagoning it. Boom, boom, boom. Then I'm going to rough round. Rough round, rough round. What fun. Okay, and then clean round. You know, for drifts that are opening up holes, you really don't need to use anything other than mild steel. You must accept that drifts are consumable. And mild steel is perfectly adequate for it. Now, the reason that it's perfectly fine to use mild steel is because, you know, your common sizes. You might not have all your sizes of tool steel in those uh, in the shop, and so you know going to mild steel isn't the end of the world. Okay, so I'm going to begin the cutting off process. Oh, you found a drift? <laughs> Sam, you're a horrible person. Okay, we're gonna have to, I, I, I want you guys to uh, come up with some good prank ideas for when Sam does his show as a, as a penalty for having done that. That is horrible. Did you have it the whole time? time are we on? Oh, 
Oh no, getting out, out of control on this bad boy. Oh yeah, we'll still get a plug. Okay, time to drift it open. Put it in the fire. Oop. Hey, if you guys haven't noticed, new threads, like my favorite workwear, Wrangler workwear, it's ridiculously expensive in the United Kingdom and incredibly cheap in the US. Wrangler workwear, and like every time I go, I like stock up. I'm gonna use the drift I made. I stock up on, on, on Wrangler gear because it's just so tough and very inexpensive. And uh, these are, these are, this is a brand new pair I'm breaking in today, so it's an exciting day. So the prank is swap aluminium and titanium? Yeah, absolutely, freaking lootly, dude. You're paying for it. I've got titanium. Okay, it's alright, you're gonna have to move the camera according. Okay, get that out of the way, that doesn't need to be there. There we go. Okay, beautiful. Um, okay, I need this. And I need this. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, next step. Ha, ha, this is fun, guys. Oh, I like this. You know what? Should we kind of include, I, I, I don't know. Should we include this as a theme every week? Like a 10 minute freaking speed forging thing? I think we should do that. I'm gonna beast this thing. This is gonna be done. 10 minute forging, five minutes preparation. So you get your tools together. If your tools aren't together, you've got to make them. Okay. I think that'd be a great idea. How do you guys like that? Hey, remember, you gotta do your end of the deal. You gotta go on the YouTube and share this stuff. Three quarters on, a quarter off. Yeah, we go. You got five minutes left. You got to twist in the handle. No, <laughs> twist and flat bar look ugly. Boom, boom. Thanks for hitting my hot cut, Jan. Now it's, uh, it's blunt. <laughs> oh, you guys, I need, I need harder challenges. Having said that, <laughs> this could go dreadfully wrong. Down a bit. Yeah, make it make it uh, forge a little cooler. Yeah. Four minutes? Guys, like what's going on? Not much of a show. No pressure here. I'm joking actually. Uh, this could go dreadfully wrong. Hit my thumb on something at some point. What happened? Can't we? I just <laughs> Injure yourself from time to time and have no clue what you hit. Three minutes forty. Okay, here we go. Nobody said a horse head bottle opener.
Hey, could you run over into the right corner of the workshop? So you want to know how you test a beer bottle? Oh, by the way, how much time? Easy peasy, guys. A whole minute to spare. Well, a minute's drinking. Nah. <laughs> I gotta drive home. So that's how you test if a bottle opener is gonna work. If you can go ahead and lift a beer bottle up from the cap while it's uh, while it's still on there, it'll work. Do you want to go ahead and zoom in? It'll focus, just you wait, there we go. So that took me, what, nine minutes? I'm done. How do you guys like that? I think that was pretty fun. With nine seconds to spare, I wanna let you guys know. I'm gonna be severely upset if you don't go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Alex Steele. Find your favorite video, I guarantee you're gonna enjoy, here we go. See how much time I had to spare? You guys need to give me a harder challenge next week. I actually know it's Sam's challenge next week, eh? <laughs> please, 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 it'd mean the world to me. Head over to my YouTube channel. Let me find the video you think was the favorite. And you know, if you feel like it, comment that you think it was the favorite. And then share it. You don't have to share it on your Facebook wall. Share it with some friends of yours. You know, be like, hey, I enjoyed this video. I want you guys to see it. I would really appreciate that. There's no way I can know if you did it or not. That's okay. Just as a, uh, as a blacksmith to blacksmith, enjoyer of the craft and, and handmade things to enjoy of the craft and handmade things or just somebody who wants to see uh, you know uh, <laughs> some British blacksmith make some stuff uh, in Norwich in the United Kingdom share it with your friends it would mean the world to me I want to say guys again how grateful I am that there are 10,000 of you who care enough about blacksmithing and care enough about what it is that I do to subscribe to me on YouTube that's like a momentous thing that is difficult to appreciate, but it's 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 stunning. It's it's shocking. It's it's incredible. I can't wait till we get to 20 and then on to 100. And with your help by sharing the videos and liking the videos and commenting and subscribing, that's we we're gonna get there, guys. Again, what my challenge. What your challenge? One heat shoe or ten the shoe in ten, ten minutes. Shoe in ten minutes for Sam. I think you're gonna have to do that next week. Easy. You gotta practice. Easy. No, <laughs> I've been a shoe for about six months, <laughs> guys. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It's been fantastic, been thrilling making this bangle with you guys, making this bottle opener with you guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. Sticking both on the anvil. See if I can get this thing off. Hang on. I want to lower the angle a bit of this. We just whoop. Boom, boom, we're gonna go to Facebook. Guys, thank you so much. Remember, please, please, please head over to YouTube. Let me know what your favorite things are. I also wanna let you know, I've got pre-orders on my tools. We're gonna be starting to make those over the next seven to 10 to 14 days. We're gonna be making the tools that you guys are pre-ordering. I've got the classic rounding hammer open for pre-order on my website, then the square circle rounding hammer. I'm extraordinarily busy. I don't know when the next opportunity is gonna be for me to be able to make hammers for you guys. So if you want a hammer now and not in six months, now is the time to get your name on the list. Go to begin, no, wrong. Go to blacksmithingtools.co.uk to pre-order a rounding hammer now before it's way down the line. Very busy and I, I made sure to put this time aside to get these hammers to you guys. Also, I want to let you know if you want to learn blacksmithing online at beginblacksmithing.com. It would mean the world to me. Help support what we do. And hopefully, I'm, the, the plan with all these things is, is that it's going to help you move forward in your blacksmithing hobby. Again, thank you so much, Sam. Please wave in front of the camera. Woo! Sam, thank you so much for your help 
means the world to me. I can't wait to switch sides with you, have you on this side of the anvil next week. For now, guys, I want to just... I keep saying for now, guys, because I don't want to end this thing because it's just so much fun hanging out with you all. You know, it's just fantastic. I'll see you tomorrow on the Daily Forge videos. Bye-bye.